Good afternoon. My name is Jed Distler, and I'm the new artistic director for Salon Concerts at Clavier House, but please don't applaud me. <laughs> and we're happy to have Maestro Mikhail Voskresensky returning to the series, and he was here uh, last year, I believe. Uh, and this series was started by our late and much missed mutual friend, Joseph Patridge. And he started the series to provide an inclusive environment, an expressive forum for pianists of all generations. And thanks to the generosity of Clavier House, and uh, Sujatri Reisinger is here, the proprietor of Clavier House, and thank you so much for your generosity because all of our artists get to perform on top quality concert grand pianos, as you can see this gorgeous Fazioli grand here that I, I adore this one. And to hear these pianos is great to hear them in an intimate setting like this. And because of that, we, it, we promote engagement between performer and listener and the, we record and live stream the concerts and that helps broaden the reach for each concert all over the world. And uh, so there are people in Europe who are, who are uh, getting the stream and, and it's really wonderful. And during the intermission and after the concert, we encourage you to check out the Clover House showroom pianos or you can visit them online at clavierhouse.com, except you're here in person, so you take advantage of that after the concert. And if you go online, you can browse the available inventory and learn more about Sujatri and his team and their expert piano restoration services. You see, I have to scroll with my thumb. It's not very easy. <laughs> anyway, we rely on donations to keep giving performance opportunities to artists who need and deserve them. And your donations are tax deductible thanks to our fiscal sponsor, Piano on Park, which is a nonprofit organization committed to enriching the cultural fabric of New York City. They indeed do that. And we have reached our tier one goals for the 2021 calendar year meaning that we've covered all of our piano tuning costs. And we recently launched Tier 2, which is an experiment we're trying. And this aims to benefit all performers equally, meaning that all, do all donations that we're receiving up till November 30th then are added up at the end of the year and equally divided among all the performers. And we've set a target goal of $10,000, but we appreciate contributions of any size, and they all go to the artists. So thank you for your support and for your generous donations. And you can find instructions for contributing on the donation box near the entrance or on the website salon.clavierhouse.com. Um, and I want to talk a tiny bit about the program. Maestro Voskresensky is playing works of Schumann and Prokofiev. And Chrysleriana is one of Schumann's most loved large-scale pieces. And I read, I don't know if this is true, that Schumann claims that he composed the eight pieces of Chrysleriana over a period of four days. I, I don't know if I really believe that, but he, he did revise it later on. And, it's called Chrysleriana because the Chrysler in the title refers to the character of Johannes Chrysler in the works of E.T.A. Hoffman, the novelist. And Chrysler was this eccentric and a really wild conductor whose moods changed every two seconds. You never knew what was going to happen with him. And probably Schumann something of, saw something of his own volatile nature in Chrysler. But in any event, Schumann often referred to Chrysleriana as one of his favorite of all of his pieces, one of his best works. And I bet we there's some agreement on that. Now, on the second half of the concert, uh, Maestro Vos 
Krasinski will play the sonata number eight of Prokofiev, and that is the third and the longest, and perhaps the most subtle, I think, of the three sonatas that uh, make up the trilogy called Prokofiev's War Sonatas, uh, numbers six, seven, and eight. And, you know, I, it just occurred to me that 2024, this marks, this year marks the 80th anniversary of when this sonata was premiered in Moscow by Emil Gilels. And I have no doubt that uh, Mikhail Voskresensky is a pianist very much in the tradition of Emil Gilels and Sviatoslav Richter and also of his great teacher Lev Oberon. And, uh, and uh, Mikhail was the pianist who gave the European premiere of the second piano concerto by Shostakovich. And as many of you know, he courageously left his native Russia for the United States in 2022, protesting the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And, you know, although he had to immigrate in tragic circumstances, I think American pianists and music lovers have really benefited f from his presence here, as well as those of you who saw his master class here yesterday, also online and it's available on our YouTube channel. Anyway, I shouldn't talk anymore because this pianist's artistry speaks for itself. So please welcome back to the Salon concert stage, Mikhail Voskresensky.
Thank you, Maestro. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Um, wow. Um, we can have a little conversation or else if you just want to say hello and relax and unwind. How do you feel? <laughs> we have a lot of flowers to, here we go. Yeah. Well, thank you for a very beautiful program. And I have to say, you don't interpret the Prokofiev as much as you inhabit the piece. And uh, I wanted to ask you, when was the first time you encountered the Prokofiev? When did you first hear the Prokofiev sonata? When I played? When you first heard it, when you first were aware of it. I first heard, heard it, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I heard it all my life, ah. <laughs> since childhood. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, the first I played in the, when I was student, of, no, when I was student of college, of Musical um, Neuchilish, uh, high school, musical uh -huh. high school in Moscow. And my great teacher, uh, Ilya Klechko, wonderful, who gave me a lot of understanding of music. He gave me third sonata uh, by Prokofiev. The third sonata, which uh, is the it, short it, one. It yeah. is short, it is only seven minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and uh, I uh, studied this sonata and then played in some competition, so it was very successful. But eighth sonata I learned also very long ago. Unfortunately, it is not uh, sitting in the uh, head all the time. You must repeat, repeat, and repeat. Mm -hmm. uh, and I learned it uh, before when I took participation in the Prague Spring Festival in uh, Prague, in Czechoslovakia. Ah. It was in 1957, uh, almost 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I played this sonata because uh, this uh, festival was dedicated to modern music. So uh, this sonata was uh, written by Prokofiev in 1943. So yeah. in 57, it was only 14 years old. Yeah. A very young sonata. Yeah. Did you hear Emil Gilles? Of course, I hear everybody yeah. who plays this sonata. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Gilles played it wonderful. I'm a great amateur and, uh, uh, of Emil Gilles. I was acquainted with, with him. Mm -hmm. And I, I cannot tell that I was his friend because I'm much younger, mm -hmm. but we have very good relations and he helped me a lot. Yes, because he premiered this. And do you know who premiered the Prokofiev Eighth Sonata in the United States? If anybody you guesses, you win a prize. Anyone Nobody. know? Vladimir Horowitz at the... Uh, I think it was at the Russian consulate in the 1940s, but he never recorded it, which uh, is interesting. Uh, yeah. So, and you worked with uh, Lev Oberin. Yes. yes. I, and uh, what was he like as a teacher? Because he's someone who younger generations don't know about, but he was a very important pianist and teacher. Uh, Lev Oberin was a great figure in Russian, uh, in Russian culture. Uh, he was friend of Shostakovich and of Prokofiev. With Shostakovich, they were very, very close friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Oborin studied uh, pian uh, um, pianism, pianism and composition mm -hmm. in the conservatory, uh -huh. uh, some voices told that he will be a great composer. And Shostakovich was a wonderful pianist. He will be a great pianist. Yes. But the destiny decided ob 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 against. Uh, uh, Abarot, Nabarot, the uh, opposite, yes. opposite, opposite, that's, and that's Aborian won Chopin competition in the 1927. It was first Chopin competition and had great career like mm -hmm. pianist. That's right. And Shostakovich wrote his first symphony. It, it was sensation in right. Russia. Right, and I, I think Shostakovich was in the first Chopin competition. Yes, he, he, he played with him. Right, he came in fifth or sixth, something like that. Sorry. He came in fifth place. <laughs> Not that it that was no, so. No, he received diplom. Oh, he did receive a diplom. He did uh, receive diplom yeah, in this right. competition. Right. Yes. Now you premiered the second 
concerto of Shostakovich in Europe, and did you work with the composer on the yes, piece? Yes, with my very big proud, I can tell that I'm pupil of Shostakovich, because Shostakovich gave me three lessons. Because it was like a chance when I was invited to this Prague Spring Festival, mm -hmm. I looked for I looked for the, some modern compositions, mm -hmm. and suddenly I have known that um, Shostakovich is writing now new concerto for his son Maxim, that's right, that's who, right. who finished uh, Central Musical School this year, mm -hmm. and by the help of many friends, they ask mm -hmm. Shostakovich. Shostakovich kindly agreed. Mm -hmm. And he came to Prague, mm -hmm. and he listened my performance, and uh, he, he estimated very well. And what, did he, this, and, and, and what did he tell you? Did, did he give you any advice? Oh, no, I must tell that he was a wonderful teacher, because he, all the time he told, it is wonderful, it is perfect, <laughs> you're wonderful. No any rude uh, words, but uh, please, what in this act, in this measure, could you play a little faster or a little slowly? Yes, uh, please, once more. Mm -hmm. Yes, but he was very polite. Mm -hmm. In the con uh, contrary of Shabalin, uh, who uh -huh. was uh, the rector of Moscow Conservatory and great composer also, mm -hmm. he was very strong and uh -huh. the pupil afraid of him. But mm -hmm. he was also a wonderful teacher. Now, you, you were too young to have known Prokofiev. I? Yes. No, Prokofiev was born in the 1891, and I was born in 1935. Uh -huh. Not so big difference. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So I'm going to, I mean, there's so much to ask you, but I'm going to throw a few names, to because there are some pianists who, in the West, we only really know about through recordings, yet they were legends in Russia, for instance, Vladimir Sofronitsky. Did you hear him? Of course. And, and what, what were your impressions of Sofronitsky? It is maybe the, mo the biggest impression uh, from him, like from artist. Mm. It was enigmatic. He went on the stage like <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I don't know, like prophet, oh. yes, <laughs> and uh, no any uh, changing of the face, mm -hmm. very modest position, and great impression. But he was very nervous man, mm. and sometimes if he was not satisfied, it was wonderful, I, I exist on, in such concertos, but if he was, did not like what he played, he interrupted concert, and uh, it was announced that Sofronitsky has had uh, <laughs> a cock, a concert uh, oh. uh, cancelled. Mm -hmm. yes. But next time he played wonderful. But I, this time he played also wonderful. No one yeah. understood why. <laughs> because uh, he, did, he was very criticized to himself. And also because he was the son-in-law of Scriabian, and he, that was the composer he, he played. He was not son, he was son-in-law. No, son-in-law, that. that's what I said. Yes, and, that. and you made a wonderful recording of all the Scriabian sonatas, which I highly recommend that you find. I think you can download them mm. or stream them. I don't know if the physical discs. I spoke still. about these features of my destiny in this whole one year and a half. Mm -hmm. about my connection with the family of Skrebin. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, Safranitsky was son-in-law because he was husband of Yelena Alexandrovna, first mm -hmm. uh, one of the daughters of Skrebin. But Skrebin at that time already was died. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, uh, Safranitsky was his uh, her husband. But when I met Yelena Alexandrovna, Safranitsky was already in divorce. Yes, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and I met him and met his daughter, the grandfather, uh, granddaughter yeah. of Skrabin, 
Roxana, she's a Oh, yes, yes. yes. I've and she lives you know, now in San Francisco. San Francisco that's and we right. have met two weeks ago. <laughs> mm. Yes, and we were in very close friendship uh, many, many years. I was a uh, witness of all her несчастья, как сказать. Sorry? Unfortunately, uh, da, because uh, she had many, many not very good things in her life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. She had uh, two husbands. W w the last husband, uh, Sasha Kogan, was a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. I, I was very happy to meet him, mm -hmm. but he died very early. Mm -hmm. And their son has some problem with legs. So mm -hmm. he works, he, work, uh, wo uh, he goes, but very hard, mm -hmm. very hard. Uh, so uh. he is invalid. So, uh, yes. But I I especially for him, for his son, they immigrated in 1973. Yes, Not yes. because of political questions, mm -hmm. but because they tried to uh, treat this yes. illness. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it, it is not very successful. Yeah. I want to ask also about another pianist who is very fascinating to me, uh, uh, Maria Yudina. And did who, who, who? you, Maria Yudina. Maria Yudina. Yudina. Maria Yudina, it is great figure in Moscow, in uh, Russian culture. Yeah. Uh, Sofronitska and Yudina, it is St. Petersburg school. Mm. It's not Moscow school. I'm Moscow school. Yeah. Yes, but uh, Yudina was a wonderful uh, person. Mm. She lived uh, in um, Moscow when I studied in Moscow Conservatory. Mm -hmm. She was a very great lady uh, who always put dress, black dress, until the, uh, until the floor. Yes, floor. yes. That's and those. Uh, she was with cross. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was told that she was Buddhist, but after this she was I Catholic. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, but it was enigma, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember one of her concerts with Galina Pisarenka, it is vocalist, uh, uh, yes, singer. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, she told very low voice with not very good diction, uh, today in the best world, Ahmatova went out. So we will play five uh, verses of Ahmatova for uh -huh. the music of Prokofiev. Oh. And this was a wonderful performance. Wow. The day it was in 1966, I remember mm. uh, all my life. And she played wonderful, she played very strange. She and could be very strange, and yes. And indeed. always very impressive for, for listeners. Mm -hmm. But I don't advise to my pupil to copy. No. <laughs> and I don't copy because <laughs> every teacher will criticize very, very strong. But her, nobody criticized because it's, it, it, she was like Glenn Gould, maybe. In a way, yes, you're in, right. the, in other way, of course, but... In, yeah. uh, I think there was a funny story about Sviatoslav Richter wrote that Maria Yudina was playing a Bach prelude in fugue, and she was playing it, it very... From the, from the film of Mont Saint Jean. Yes, yes. playing it very loud, and says, yes. why do you play it so loud? Because we are at war. Yes, <laughs> now war goes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. And uh, w um, one other person I want to ask you about, uh, we really should be talking about your own playing, but, but uh, another... Of, I have to know about Samuel Feinberg, who was one of my Samuel great Feinberg, hearers. Yes. Did you hear him or meet him? Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. no, Feinberg was the old generation. Yes, he was an older generation. He was the pupil of Golden Weiser, but they yeah. were almost uh, the same age. No, not, yeah. not always, uh, 20 years. Yeah, 20 years <laughs> difference. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yes, but Frein, uh, Samuel, Samuel Evgenievich Feinberg well, was very great uh, white educated uh, person. Mm. He was a wonderful composer. Oh, absolutely. And I like his music. And it is not so difficult as somebody tells. No, it yeah. is very good music. Mm -hmm. He wrote a lot of co uh, sonatas, three concertos for piano and orchestra. Yeah. But he was not popular, I don't know why. 
very much. Maybe they pressed to him, but he was very close to the, to the public, mm -hmm. to the audience. Uh, he was always very serious, and uh, he wrote a wonderful book. Everybody knows the book of Genrich Neuhaus, but I advise to read the book of Samuel Feinberg about the music and pianism. Mm -hmm. It is very interesting. I think it is in English, yes. I, th I, think, it is, I think it is too. And um, so what, so, and uh, what is coming up next for you? What, uh, do you, what, what are some of the concerts you have or are, are, will you be doing other master classes? The next? Yeah, the next. The next concert I will play in Tbilisi. It oh. is in Georgia. It is very far from the America. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. It will be 20th of April. And mm. after this, I will fly to London because I was invited by um, uh, Royal College of Music. Oh, I was just there. I was just you judging been, uh, a competition okay. there. And I will play there. Oh, good. Yes, I will play morning concert, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And after this, I will give two hours or maybe three hours uh, master class. Well, I'm going to write an email to you because there are some students who I want, I hope they will play for you because will there's- you may write, It will be 23rd of April. Okay, I'm going, because I was just at the Royal College, they had the Chapel Medal Award and I was on the jury and they, are, they have some fantastic students who I think will benefit a lot from you. I think we are going to be on a jury in Sorry? July. I think the two of us are going to be on a jury in July. Where? In Chicago. Have they asked you yet? I was not informed. Oh, well, I think they're going to be writing you very soon about this, about there's a competition, I think, and I, and I think they were going to ask, but well, any, anyway, we have a lot to talk about, but Maestro, thank you for a beautiful, beautiful afternoon of music and... Uh, Sorry it was too long. No, <laughs> are you kidding? Not too long at all. Oh, uh, I just, oh, quick, one question. The Kempf transcription, Kempf, yes. Kempf. usually you hear the Gambati, but... Yeah. but the Gambati for violin. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but, the, but, but the Kempf one never hears. This was so interesting, so... Yeah. What 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 is special about the Kempf arrangement for you? I like it. Because That's a good <laughs> reason. <laughs> because it's wonderful music. It is. Anyway, uh, I'm I'm gonna just grab my little iPad because I don't have cue cards. Because otherwise, if I don't have this, I, for, I if I don't have this, I forget about what's coming up. But I should tell you that next week. At uh, two o'clock, uh, we have another large-scale Schumann work, the Humoresque, and the pianist uh, Aisyon Jin is giving a wonderful program here. And then, um, oh my goodness, there's so many good things. Uh, pianist Mei Fang is here April 22nd, and she's gonna be playing the Liszt Sonata, another wonderful piece. April 27th, the composer and pianist James Adler, who I think is very special, is giving a program here. And then May 5th, Sunday, at the Presbyterian Church on 105th Street in Amsterdam Avenue, there's going to be a memorial program for Joseph Patrick, where people are playing and speaking. And that's at 5 o'clock. And you can just go on our the website for Salon Concerts. And before we sign off, I want to encourage everyone to please donate at the door if you haven't yet or online for Salon Concerts and follow us on social media, subscribe to our mailing list and please feel free to try out our showroom pianos and you can direct any piano questions to info at clavierhouse.com or to Sudatri Reisinger who is here today. Thank you very much, thank you Maestro. <laughs> And thank you all, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Be well.